part 88 of C-sharp tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the purpose of thread start delegate. This is continuation to part 87, so please watch part 87 before proceeding. Let's understand the purpose of thread start delegate with an example. Here we have got a class called number. Within that, we have got a static function called print numbers. This function is going to print numbers from 1 to 10. Within the main method, we are creating an instance of the thread class and to its constructor, we are passing the name of the function that we want this thread to execute. Since print numbers is a static function, we are invoking it on the name of the class. I have this exact same code already typed within Visual Studio. Let's go ahead and run this and notice the output is what we expect, numbers from 1 to 10. Now, let's rewrite this line right here using thread start delegate. First of all, notice the constructor of the thread class. There are four overloaded versions. And if you look at the second overloaded version, it expects a parameter of type thread start. And what is this thread start? It is a delegate. Now, what is a delegate? A delegate is a type safe function pointer. Why do we call a delegate you know, as type safe function pointer? That is because the signature of the function to which the delegate points to should match the signature of the delegate. Otherwise, we'll have a compiler error. That's why delegates are called as type safe function pointers. Now, if you look at this delegate syntax, notice that you know it returns void and doesn't take any parameters. And the function to which it is pointing, that is print numbers, look at its signature. It returns void and doesn't take any parameters. So the signature of this function matches the signature of this delegate. That's why delegates are type safe function pointers. Now, coming to this example, this delegate is pointing to this function. And we are passing that delegate as an argument to the thread class constructor. So when this line is executed, this thread is going to execute print numbers function. All right, so now the obvious next question is why a delegate need to be passed as a parameter to the thread class constructor. Now, what is the purpose of a thread? Why do we create thread? The purpose of creating a thread is to execute a function. Maybe we have a function that takes a long time to execute. So we want to fire off another thread and then we want that thread to execute that function so that the UI thread is free uh, you know, to maintain a responsive user interface. Right? So the purpose of creating a thread is to execute a function. And what is a delegate? A delegate is a type safe function pointer, meaning it is uh, pointing to a function that we want the thread to execute. In short, all threads require an entry point to start execution. Any thread you create will need an explicitly defined entry point, that is, a pointer to the function where they should begin execution. So threads always require a delegate. Okay, now you may be wondering within the first example, you know, we have created a thread like this to the constructor. We, we have just passed the name of the function that we want this thread to execute. We didn't explicitly create a delegate and pass it to the thread class constructor. So, how did it work then? It's working there in spite of not creating the thread start delegate explicitly because the framework is doing that automatically for us behind the scenes. Okay, and there are several other ways of you know uh, passing the address of the function to the thread class, like by using the delegate keyword or by using lambda expression, as you can see here. Now let's say you have to use the delegate keyword. So all you do is use the delegate keyword and then invoke the function. Let's go ahead and run this and see if we get the same output. Look at that. And we can also use a lambda expression like that. So number dot print numbers. The same output. Now, so far in this example, print numbers um, you know, has been a static function. Now, thread function need not be a static function always. It can also be a non-static function. In case of non-static function, you know, we have to create an instance of the class, as you can see here, and then invoke the function on that instance. Let's actually look at that within the example. So let's make this a non-static function. So obviously, this line now is going to throw an error. So since it's a non-static function, we need to create an instance of our class. So let's call the instance number. 
and then to the thread class constructor on the instance we invoke print numbers function the same output all right that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day